at Eden, we talk about uh, uh, giving, and you can give. Uh, the easiest way to do that, just go to 405-400-1513 and uh, text the amount that you want to give. Uh, if it's on your first time doing that, it will uh, send you a text message back, basically uh, telling you to put that information in. And then, so then after that, all you had to do is type 405-400-1513, the dollar amount, and uh, we'll... We thank you for your uh, uh, giving and your your offerings uh, that you send to us, uh, that it's going to be the um, helping us even with the uh, uh, park series uh, where we're going to go and basically tell what up to the people of Oklahoma City. And we, we're praying now that they receive the word that we're preaching, that people instead of just the idea that it's some man-made thing they can see the supernatural power of God I was talking with a man this uh, week and it was funny and what we were talking about and what I was telling him about uh, with some issues with another person that he's a uh, that he's an acquaintance with and that he had he had done some things because he was like, hey, you know, this really benefited me, so I just got him this stuff to, you know, uh, to, to these books and things and stuff. But he was, I guess he was upset because he did not see immediate change from the person. And so I was telling him, I was like, well, you have to also think what your process was and what you went through, there wasn't immediate change either. <laughs> you know, it was just one of those things where you, you now see, and, you know, here it is just in the middle of it. And and, and I would say he's kind of, he's kind of hard, a hard guy, you know, in general. But it, the thing was is he, he sees and he started praising God with tears. And so uh, where he was just crying because he was like he saw – the goodness of God in his life. And he saw how God changed some stuff to a point where he was uh, buying a house and he just bought it cash. Well, when you then know that, man, 15 years ago, that was an impossibility for him. It was an impossibility for him to get the house with credit at that point in time. So uh, he started praising God and giving him glory and giving him honor um uh and, and he was you could tell the emotion that was <clears throat> sweeping over him that uh then he was like man I just wanted this for this guy I wanted him to see uh God's goodness and so I was just telling him it's like hey man you need to calm down but basically what you need to do is I can tell the goodness of God uh, uh that that has been on your life give God the same opportunity that you received, you know, and you need to mend that fence with that guy. So we're out there and we're having the real conversations that need to be had with people. And uh, I suggest that uh, you all can help us, 405-400-1513, and just put the dollar amount <clears throat> in the uh, message part. And uh, we thank you uh, for sowing into this ministry. What we're going to talk about today is what I've been talking about over these last, uh, well, I'm going to say it's really been three weeks, but we had a, a nice little break in between. Um, but I've been saying we're going to get to this Mark chapter four about the, the parable of the sower. And so uh, we're going to uh, look at that um, get and, and get that going. And so if you would turn to... Mark chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 3. Mark chapter 4, and we're starting in verse 3, okay? So what we've been talking about, <clears throat> we've been talking about sowing and reaping. We've been talking about sowing and reaping is, is the kingdom. It's a part, it's the mainstay, it's the economic system of the kingdom of God, and that We've been talking about the kingdom of God because I want people to understand that there is a system, uh, there is a there is a an operation of 
what God is doing in the earth. And so because there is an operation, it just doesn't work that a lot of times people think, well, you can just pray whatever and God hears you and then whatever. And, you know, you, you can just be like, okay, uh, you know, uh, roses and grapefruit, it's all awesome. And it's like, that don't make any sense, right? Right. Well, it doesn't. Or we get people who they're mad because they think God didn't answer their prayers. And the facts is, is that, no, that's not what happened. It's like, I believe we talked about last time in particular, where uh, it's he, he, Jesus said that, that if you will say unto this mountain, in other words, if you operate like him, if you say to this mountain, be a, get up and remove yourself, it will happen for you. And he says that if you pray, believe that you receive and you will have what you asked for. And so I'm just saying God is not the one that has hindered, if you will, the prayers. He's not the one that is not answering. We are the ones that aren't operating in his kingdom, his system. We're being people of the world instead of being people in the world. We are, we, we, we are being people who don't recognize that he has a kingdom instead of being of that kingdom. And so basically the, the parable of the sower, it, it gets into talking about this is the kingdom. Okay, and so uh, if you go to Mark chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 3. And so I'm just going to go ahead and read. Listen and take note. A sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed, fell by the path, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and soon it sprang up because it did not have deep soil. But when the sun rose, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell on good ground, and it yielded grain, and it sprang up and increased by thirty, sixty, or a hundredfold as much. Then he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I'll just read these, uh, uh, read these next two uh, verses. When he was alone, those who were around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. He asked him about, I'm sorry, about the parable. He said to them, it is, uh, it, uh, to you is given the secrets of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, everything is said in parables. I'm going to read that again because my reading was whack. When he was alone, those who were around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. He said, now check it out, to you is given the secret of the kingdom of God. Man, see, that's what I'm talking about here in this parable. It's literally, he, he's, he, he's showing these people the kingdom of God. He's showing them this, like, I want you all to know what the kingdom of God is about. He goes, I'm sitting here, and I, I've said these things to you, and quite honestly, we have to think these are agrarian people. These are people who understand 
like farm life. They understand these things. They understand growing crops. They understand fishing. They understand, like, these are things that they're basic uh, to their life, and they comprehend them very well. Like, they know, oh, well, that's a mustard seed. Oh, and that's a mulberry bush. And, oh, that right there is a fig tree uh, seed. Like, they, they know these things. And so he's sitting there, and he's comparing the kingdom to things they know and understand. It, it, it would be like if he, if Jesus came and he just plopped himself in the middle of uh, insurance actuaries. First of all, we would not understand one parable because insurance actuaries talk weird to begin with, okay? And so, but he would sit there and he would begin to tell them things like that was it, that's within their scope and reasoning of understanding. He would start talking to them that way and they would just be like, oh, okay, yeah, I get that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, I, do need a, I do need a table on, the, 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 you know, it would just be something ridiculous. So he's talking to these agrarian people, these people who understand the land. And he's saying, this is the kingdom. And, and, and what, he, he, what he likens the kingdom to, uh, he, he, he starts talking about a guy who goes out to sow and where he was sowing and what he was sowing. And he, he, I mean, it's kind of like they're sitting there and I'm going to sit there with them because I'm going to be like, what the heck are you talking about, dude? That don't make no sense. What was that parable about? So <clears throat> he goes and he says, um, he said, uh, we're going to start in verse 13. He said to them, do you not understand this parable? Well, duh, that's why we're trying to talk to you right now, because obviously we don't understand this parable. <laughs> the sower sows the word. Oh yeah. So so he's he's literally going back and he's looking at this deal and he says the sower sows the word. These are those beside the path where the word is sown. But when they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word which is sown in their hearts. Man. Okay. So we get the first understanding of the seed that's just by the path. That, that y there's, there's, there's some things that are in the seed. Now we know that the word is the seed. We also know that the person who sows the word is the sower. And so many people, they sit there, and because they don't read Scripture, and what I mean by read Scripture is I'm not talking about a cursory view of it, just, you know, okay, I read that, and then you just, you know, it just goes away. Like, and that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people sit there, and they, they read something out of the Bible, but the only thing they read is, like, Jesus wept, you know? And then they don't even think about what does it mean Jesus wept. They don't even think about it. They don't do nothing about it. They just, now, it's the word, but because they did nothing with it, it's just stolen by Satan. Because to him, it's just that seed never penetrated the ground. It never, it never, it never got into your heart. It never got to something that, where you just think about and you understand it or you, or you ponder it. And so the thing that we have to look at is that the kingdom is one of those things where, first of all, in order to really be active participant in the kingdom is you have to be a sower of the word. You have to be someone who sits there and says, I'm going to make this a priority in my life and I'm going to spread it in my life. But the point is, is that you can read a lot of word. But if you never think about it, it never becomes a part of who you are. It's just seed on the ground. And pretty much say the enemy of your life comes. He just takes all it all up. That don't mean nothing. We'll just, we'll just get rid of that. So he goes on. He says, others likewise 
are, are seed sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, but have no root in themselves. So they endure for a time, but afterward when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they fall away. Once again, examples of the kingdom. So there are people who who they receive God's word. Like like basically people who who they've been going through. They they've they have they have they have had trouble in their life or they've had something and so they hear a word and they're like, Oh, that's what I need. Oh yeah, I receive it. Yeah, there it is. That's what it is. But then what ends up happening is as they continue on, and they really were happy about that word. Oh, I believe the Lord is increasing me more and more, me and my children. Like it says in Psalms uh, 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 15, 14, but, uh, 115, 14. But it, they, they, they're, ho- they're like, yeah, I believe that word. That's a good word. Yeah. But what ends up happening is something comes along. Something else comes along that gets them distracted from that word. Basically, that word was something that was sown, but the ground was so shallow that it was sown uh, show, uh, um, sown in that it they they don't it they don't have a real meaning or understanding or grasp of that word. So they so so basically. Something else comes up. I remember one uh, instance where uh, there, there was one like they were needing some financial uh, um, help. They, they needed, and so once again they go to we're going to trust God, and so the we're going to trust God to do this. Okay, well that's great. So you know you you start to see okay. The husband starts asking, okay, so this is what I'm believing for. This is what we're, we're going to need. This is what we're going to need to be out of this, this right here. And, and it shows her scripture. So she sees the scripture, right? And so you get that word. And, and I was like, you got it. So the husband's taking the idea where he's putting that word in his heart. He's trying to, he's getting that to be a point of, I'm going to sow this word. And so... The wife doesn't, though. But she agrees that, yeah, yeah, because once again, why? They they need some financial help. So, of course, she's like, well, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But then something else would come up, like this problem or that problem would come up while believing to be helped by God out of this situation. And so it's kind of one of those things where it gets into, well, I believe, but all these other things came up. Well, see, at that point in time, you're not really in the kingdom. You're not in the kingdom because you're not believing with, in this case, your husband, but it could be like, hey, you can have friends that are trying to help you do it too. You're not believing really with them because you're more concerned looking at the things coming towards you as opposed to believing what God already said about it. There's a thing called fact and truth. And what's unfortunate is that most people, they look at facts, but rarely do they regard the truth. You're looking at facts, but you don't regard the truth. And the point is we need to regard truth because truth destroys facts. Well, this is the fact. I was like, okay, but this is what the truth is. Where am I getting that from? I'm getting that from the kingdom. Can, okay, I'm in the middle, but go ahead. That's not... And and that's 
the facts are only true when they align themselves with the word of God. So, if the if the facts don't align themselves with what God said about a situation, they're not true. They are facts, meaning I can observe, I can see, touch, feel, and take. I can see like, okay, that is a Hey, here's the fact, right? The the fact and I keep going back to this and I have through this whole deal. The fact that I had a 13A1C, that was a fact. That was real. It was quantifiable. They could pull my blood out, and they would sit there, and they'd do their test, and guess what that test said? I have a 13A1C. That was not in accordance to what God said about healing in my life. God already said he already, by his stripes, I was healed. So, not that I'm going to be, not that one day at some time, <clears throat> maybe God will heal me. It was, no, when I, when, I, when I was at the whipping post and I got beaten, I was getting beaten for your healing. So, the, the, the truth was I was healed. The fact said, no, you got a 13A1C. The, the fact, I mean, that, that, that was a fact. But I didn't concern myself with the fact. I concerned myself with the truth. And so two months later, I have a 5A1C. So the truth of me being healed The truth of me operating how I needed to operate was I should be around a five. So now the fact was a five. So that lined up with the truth. But when it didn't line up with the truth, I didn't regard it. No, that ain't it. I'm healed. God already healed me. He healed me from for over 2,000 years ago. So the point is, is that we're looking at this when we're saying that you can have some people that have shallow ground is that go deeper. Okay, go deeper. The thing that's beautiful about the kingdom is that it's not that the ground truly is shallow. It's just your interpretive view of it that makes it shallow. And so we have to sit there and say to ourselves, as people who say we believe Jesus, that he came preaching a kingdom. And that's what I've been, that's what we've been, the last three weeks, that's what we've been talking about, is his kingdom. Being in that kingdom, being of the kingdom of God, in the world, which is not his kingdom, but we're there, we're in it as an ambassador of our kingdom. Just like when I talked about the Polish president was here, he probably stayed at the embassy, which means he was staying in Poland. He he rested at night in Poland, but he was doing work in the United States. And so in the same way, we got to start resting in the kingdom and doing work in the world. So... As we continue on, and others are seed sown among thorns, the ones who hear the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Now, when you sit there and you hear this, once again, notice that the first three grounds, okay, the 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 pad rock just, you know, the the seed don't go into the ground. Okay. 
Notice that the other ground has a shallow root system. Okay. And now you come to a point where <laughs> stuff is growing. But like I said, like I was just talking about, the outside influences choke out what you heard in the word. Man, what I'm getting at here is, is this. That is how it works. That is the kingdom. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because you're of the kingdom of God. You're in the world. And you're, and you're doing the things that the kingdom of God is telling you to do. And you're doing it in a hostile environment. So, there, are, of course, there are going to be things that always come up that can choke out your seed. It can just choke. <clears throat> It'll just choke the word out. And so what you need to have happen here is you need to have the one where it says still others are seed sown in good ground. Those who hear the word and receive it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, I want you to notice here, you hear the word and you receive. You hear the word, and you receive. But notice the ground that it's in. It's tilled ground. It's tilled ground. In other words, it's Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 ground. It's it's a transformed by the renewing of your mind type of ground. That tills the soil. That gets all that good topsoil that's all turned over and, and, and all the nutrients that are, it's, it's, all tur it's all there so when you get that in the ground, it, it pops up stronger. But the thing is, is that you have to receive it. That's what it said last time. If you believe that you have received, then you will have. That's, that's a very important part to the kingdom of God, believing and receiving. See, many times you're sitting there and most people pray to God and they pray to God like a if-then statement. They, they pray to him like, well, Lord, I just really need you to do. And, and you're begging him for something because you, you've equated asking for begging. And the thing is, is this. God's like, <clears throat> I never said beg for me. I, there's literally never, even in the Old Testament, I never told you all to beg me for something. Like, if, if you go, I mean, I'm just asking, is that true? I mean, is it true? Because mostly what we think about asking for something, we then want to beg. We want to sit there and we want to tell, you know, well, can I, well, if I could just, and you're begging. And God never intended, never, even after the fall, God still never intended for you to beg of him. Man. He, God always operated on believe and receive and you'll have. So you had, you, you, you know, you go and look at some of the Old Testament prophets. You look at Ezekiel and you look at some of the stuff that God was like, hey, I want you to do it like this because I'm trying to show these people something. But even Ezekiel, who'll sit there and he's like, look, man, let me holler at you right quick. Y'all are tripping. He told you this was going to happen. So don't get mad about it. Receive the correction that you all entered into yourselves. God did not enter into this correction for you. He just brought it about because he already told y'all, if y'all forget me, if y'all don't start, if y'all don't listen to me, if y'all don't honor me, 
I'm going to have to move y'all out and destroy the land. But I told you that thousands of years ago. I told y'all that before y'all even, before your forefathers even came into the land. I let y'all know what was up. We sit here, we got to understand Elijah, I mean, he's sitting up here and he's calling fire down from heaven. And I would just like to say once again, kingdom, how it operates, it was not a long prayer. He didn't sit there and go, oh, Father, you know, you're just so good and we just, uh, you know, we just want to know that you are the one that controls things. And you just diggy, diggy, dig. And, and what I'm getting at is that the strange dronings of most of the pastors in the country about how they go and pray for stuff, it's literally like moose drool to God. It, it don't mean nothing. He's like, they ain't even saying nothing. It's like... The kingdom's operation, what we we shared last week, the kingdom's operation, it don't take a lot of words. No one eat fruit from you anymore. Next day, the tree is dried up dead. When Jesus goes to explain that process to us, what did he do? He told us, if you just say to this mountain, be removed, and cast out, it'll do it. Like, he gave us the same amount of words <laughs> that he did on that tree. Because he was trying to explain to us, he's trying to show us that operating in the kingdom is for everyone. He's showing that here in chapter three, I mean, chapter four. And he's going through, and he's explaining this parable, and he's showing us that, yeah, you know, if you just keep your ground tilled, if you renew your mind to the things of God that are in his word, um, you're just going to have 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, the point of the 30, 60, and 100 fold, the, the more you have the God kind of faith, the closer to a hundredfold you'll be receiving. He goes, if you're sitting there and you're still like, eh, you're waffling on some stuff, that's all right. Thirtyfold crop still gets some stuff done. You still, you know, you still had a crop come in, but you know that I can believe more. I can trust more. So just trust more. Just believe more. Just continue in what he is saying. Just continue in his kingdom. Man, bearing fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. That's where we ought to be, guys. That's where we have to begin to understand the kingdom. And when we begin to understand the kingdom, while I know that, you know, we've been doing this going on, for weeks now, and we're sitting there, and and I know I've said some stuff that's highly, what's the word I'm looking for? Scandalous, okay, to people, but it's scandalous because you haven't read the word. It's like, yeah, when I'm sitting there saying, Jesus said I'm Yahweh, that's something where you just, oh, oh, but then you start to understand that, oh, yeah, Pretty much that is what he said. And then when you see that he says, and I'm going to send you another comforter like me, except he'll be in you. Okay, so Yahweh said, I'm going to send you another comforter like me. What does that mean? I'm going to get on the inside. What does that do? Like, I know that's hard stuff. But what I'm saying to you is your ground tilled so you can receive it. Renewing your mind. 
That's where we have to get to. Because once again, your spirit's already perfectly whole. You you already have that. Jesus already said you you'll be born from above. He he ain't got he ain't got nothing but good above. And that's where you're being born from. And your spirit is speaking life and truth. It's speaking the things of God into you. And you, your soul, mind, will, and emotions needs to be catering to those words. And so when they cater to the words of the, they'll produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. They'll produce the things of the kingdom here on earth. Because the Spirit's not speaking the stuff on earth. It's speaking the stuff of God. Because it is God. Because the Holy Spirit, (laughs) he's Yahweh. He's literally, so he's literally speaking the wisdom and truths of the ages. He's speaking that into your spirit. I mean, into your uh, soul. Your soul has to, what does it say here? It has to believe it and receive it and then bear fruit. Man, I, 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 we've been going through this, and for the next one, we're going we're gonna to talk about a couple other things in the kingdom. And I'm, I'm going to talk about receiving for these, these net, the last couple of episodes where, where I'm talking about believe, receive, you have. Like, but the problem is, is that most people have to receive, and most people haven't received. Most people are still at a point where they're looking at God's word. They're not looking at it as life. They're looking at it as a book that needs to sit right over there so when people come in, they can see, oh, they have a Bible. They must believe Jesus. And I'm telling you, no. That's not what makes you a person who believes Jesus, a person that makes you believe Jesus, it said that the word was God and the word is God. It says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Basically, Yahweh became flesh and dwelt among us. It's this whole idea we have to understand these things because then you're sitting there and you're literally, you have the word as you're reading and as you're ingesting the word, you're going to grow in wisdom with God and with men. We got to be able to understand that. We got to be able to see that what we have in our hands is not something that we're trying to get for the point of let's, let's, uh, Let's make a man-made religion out of this. Yeah, you know, what we got here is God gave us the ability to make man-made things with it. No. God has given us the ability to know him. And in that knowing him, we then get the ability, we have the ability to operate like him. And what we've been looking at in this series is how do we operate like him? And I hope what you have seen so thus far, we've got two more episodes to go on this, but what I hope that you've seen thus far is that you operate like him by literally doing like him. And he took the word, his word, and spoke it. And it made the universe we currently are in. But he just took his word and spoke it. How do we operate here like him? How do we operate as kingdom ambassadors? We take his word. 
and speak it. So that's what we're going to be going into here for the next uh, couple of times. We're going to start taking his word and speaking it. So I know this is kind of a shorter one, but nonetheless, it's a truthful one. So as always, 